We're talking today with Sharif Marakbi. He is an executive vice president in charge of research and development at Magna. And Sharif, thanks so much for joining me here today. Thank you, John, for having me. I should point out that you have enormous automotive experience. You spent a lot of time at Ford. You spent some time at Uber. You've been on the board of Argo AI and Baidu over in China as well. And I got to believe so much of your background is in autonomous vehicles. Is that what you're going to be working on at Magna? Well, I'm going to be working on a variety of things, but the one common thing is it's all about the future. So I've had many, many years in automotive and technology, as you mentioned, and would l really like to utilize that to think about where Magna is going for the future and really be able to help the whole automotive industry. And of course, autonomy is, is so much part of that future. And Magna has been developing technology that goes hand in hand with that, like the new radar that it has. Are there other areas that you'd like to see Magna get into that ties directly into autonomy? Well, the nice thing is that trends are similar in the whole industry. When you think about uh, uh, driver assistance, autonomy, uh, electrification, connectivity, where everything is being connected, uh, so I'll be working on a variety of things. And Magna, uh, of, of many uh, in the industry, has a pretty deep knowledge in technology and work in technology with OEMs. As you mentioned, the radar, the LIDAR, there's, there's so much work in, in technology that Magna has already been uh, part of driver assistance, uh, cameras, uh, electrification, uh, connectivity. So a lot of experience in one of the most diverse places that I've seen, all the way from electronics to plastics, to structures, to complete vehicle assembly. You know, let's talk about complete vehicle assembly. Magna's the only supplier in the world that does that. Uh, you know, lately, Fisker has been in talks with Magna to have Magna do final assembly of its vehicles. Now we're learning Canoe, the, the other, uh, or one of the other uh, EV startups on the West Coast is looking to have Magna do that. And over in China, uh, you guys have got a uh, uh, an assembly plant with uh, the Beijing Auto Industry Corporation, part of their Beijing Electric Vehicles. This has got to be exciting for you to be at a supplier that actually does final assembly of vehicles as well. Oh, absolutely, John. I mean, the, the diversity of what Magna does and the depth that Magna uh, gets involved in all the way to assembling vehicles is a refreshing thing to see in the industry. And definitely will make sure that we think through, through all the capabilities that Magna has as we develop the future. And uh, the Magna team has already been doing an outstanding job, as you mentioned, including vehicle assembly, which is a very unique capability to help out the industry and Magna is definitely deep into that. You know, it, it's interesting too that we're starting to see uh, EV startups such as Fisker looking to outsource just about everything, not just vehicle assemblies we talked about, it's turning to Volkswagen to, to use its uh, MEB platform for its electric cars. It, do you think Magna might do entire EV powertrains? you know, from uh, the battery on through the motors, power electronics and all that. Well, it's funny you say that because, uh, in fact, if I roll back 10 years ago, I was working from the Ford side with Magna on the Focus electric vehicle. So Magna has a lot of capabilities going back 10, 15 years ago in, in powertrains that are really focused on the future. And uh, do I think Magna will do develop full powertrains? Magna is already into a lot of capability in electric vehicles, including the powertrain. So I think that will continue in the future. Sharif, where, where do you see this all going from a supplier standpoint? Because as you know, um, as we look into the future, so much connectivity, so much uh, data transfer in and out of cars and the possibility to be able to monetize that is something that all automakers, all the major ones are focused on right now. Is there a role for a supplier like Magna to play in that? Oh, absolutely. I think the one thing that we all have to recognize is no one entity can do all of this on their own. There's just tremendous amount of cost and skills you need to build. And Magna from a, from a tier one supplier uh, definitely wants to be part of this. It has been part of this and will continue to be part of this. And uh, the OEMs will rely on tier ones, will continue to rely on tier ones in many aspects of the future, whether it's connectivity, as you mentioned, 
uh, electrification, uh, you know, autonomy, mobility, uh, driver assistance, and the suppliers have already been taking a big piece of making all this happens, and that will continue. And Magna has the deep capabilities to do a lot of that, and that will continue. Yeah, and Magna, of course, makes stuff. I'll say it, it makes componentry and. Uh, uh, parts and the like that automakers can take and put on their cars. But I'm wondering, could you get into digital services of some kind, especially including those that interface with the end user? Well, I, it, it it all depends. I mean, it depends on, as you mentioned, the examples of, of starting to talk to some of the startups about manufacturing vehicles. There's, there's discussions in the industry around connected vehicles what to do with the data. I, I actually do believe that nobody's figured that out yet. What, what are you gonna do for the data? How are you gonna monetize that data? Uh, and what data are you gonna monetize? Um, when you talk about electric vehicles, uh, which components, who's gonna do what? And there's no question that the barrier to entry has been lowered and that's why you start seeing more startups. And if you go back in the last hundred years, a lot of the automotive has been very difficult to get into because it's engines, transmissions, sheet metal structures. It's pretty expensive stuff that requires a lot of capital. Well, that has been lowered. And now the user experience, uh, the, uh, the experience you have with your vehicle, shared mobility has been kicking in, uh, electrification for zero emissions, uh, connectivity for the data, for monetizing the data and providing the consumer a better experience. All of that is shaken up right now in the in the market and there is definitely a place and a big uh, market for all of that and the suppliers like Magna uh, is, is really well positioned for that. I, I've got to believe that because if an automaker does this and the big ones certainly are, their only customer base is their customers, whereas a supplier like Magna that can sell to almost any or possibly every automaker could have enormous scale in that re in that regard. Well, and not only that, I think the the uh, being able to serve the entire industry is something that a company like Magna can do, and they can really provide the services. It's very expensive and very. It requires a lot of uh, talent to develop some of these technologies and to figure that out. And being able to provide that across the entire industry is is a really very good uh, place for Magna to be. Do you see any uh, maybe easier places to stick your toe in the water that you're eyeing right now? Well, I think the easier places, I, I don't know if I'd call it easier, but it's easier for automotive companies uh, and automotive uh, suppliers like Magna to get into is the traditional stuff, right? If you're talking about uh, ICE powertrains, you're talking about structures and Magna has an enormous experience in that stuff, all the way to manufacture vehicles, which a lot of the startups are getting into and saying, oh no, I'm not getting into that. That's too complicated. Um, so that experience is, is there and will continue to be there. Now to transition into the future and then to be able to do a lot of these things and figure out what to do uh, is only going to be additional. And therefore, I go back to no one company can do all of this. So therefore, there's a lot of space for all of us. Okay, I, I've, I've been probing into uh, AVs, final assembly, customer experience and the like. What am I missing here? What other technologies are you excited about now that you're at Magna? Well, I think connectivity is a, is a place that is not explored yet. Many of the vehicles on the market are connected now. You think about your appliances, your laptops, your everything in our life is connected. So now the vehicles, you could argue that it's coming in a bit later than most of the you know things in our life. But the, the big challenge now is what do you do with that? Now that you have, let's call it the pipe or the piping, so you can now connect to a cloud, you can do whatever you want, you can gather a lot of data from the vehicle or the related to the consumer to help them make their drive a bit easier and better. Uh, but what data? There's an enormous amount of data. So one of the things that I'm super excited about is what data, what are you gonna do with the data and how do we help the OEMs be successful and the entire automotive industry and the technology industry, the mobility industry be successful. So I'm really excited about that. 
How do you even start to approach, like you say, there's a mountain of data out there. How do you even start to approach where you think there might be a business opportunity for you? Well, I think there's two, two areas I can think of. One is uh, something that would make the consumer's life better. So if I'm driving the vehicle and I'm given, I can use the data to give the consumer something that is more custom to them, that they care about, they think there's value in it. That's one area. The other area is a bit more internal to, uh, again, it goes back to the consumer because the service of components and systems have a lot to do with connectivity and the data. If I can provide better data, custom data, that would make the repair faster, easier, better, uh, over the air updates, so the consumer doesn't actually have to go and spend their time to service their vehicle, but it can, it can, it can provide them value in that. So I think the key thing about data is what's the value? What is, what is better for the consumer? And you start with the consumer and then you go from there. And if you can focus on that, I think we're, we're all going to be successful. Anything else technology-wise you'd like to, to start steering towards? Well, I think uh, electrification uh, in terms of there, everybody uses the word electrification as a general term. There's all the way from micro hybrids, which many of the vehicles in the market now would just shut down the engine when you stop, to electric vehicles, which there is no engine. And there's everything in between. There's mild hybrids, there's full hybrids, there's plug-in hybrids. And, and I, I do think that the business equation and the value for the consumer, again, in terms of the technology, will define what technology we're going to go in. And the good news is for the industry, a lot of these technologies are similar, whether you're talking about batteries, motors, uh, inverters, DC to DC, uh, gearboxes, you need all that for just about every form of electrification. And it might be smaller, bigger, more, you know, different from an efficiency, from a cost. But that's where I think the speed that the technology is moving and the cost will determine which technology to be in. And not to mention, of course, the leg regulatory environment is also going to dictate and help progress electrification much faster. You know, it's amazing to listen to you talk like this, uh, Sharif, because when I got into this business, the automakers would design up all the blueprints. They'd send out blueprints to suppliers to bid on, and then they would just build to that spec. Here, you're the EVP of R&D taking the industry in a whole new direction. It's, it's just extraordinary to see the change in the industry. Well, I am, I am super excited. And probably one of the most exciting things for me is to figure things out that nobody's figured out before. So to me, that, that gray area of you're not sure which way to go and being able to be part of making that happen is, is why I wake up every morning. Yeah. Well, Sharif Marakbi, thank you so much for bringing us up to date on your move to Magna and all the exciting things that you're working on. Thank you, John. Thanks for having me.